everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talker. You get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and comment below. Before my, uh, I bring on my guest, Michael Sweetest Striper, so you know I'm wearing my sunglasses because not because I want to be as cool as Michael is, but because I can't find my reading glasses and my eyes are just like all bugged out. I've been looking at a computer screen all day. I hope you guys like that first song that I played a clip of. Uh, it's a bootleg from the new album, uh, When We Were Kings, out September 23rd. There'll be a link below so you can pre-order it. And now, without further ado, I bring to you Striper, lead singer, guitarist, Michael Sweet. What's going on? I'm here in a little cabin in a bathroom uh, in the woods somewhere in Massachusetts with my grandkids. They're camping out riding their bikes right now, but uh, not the best place to be making the video. They're doing well, the interview, the that's the nicest looking outhouse I've ever seen. <laughs> it is basically a nice indoor outhouse. Yes. Indoor outhouse. Isn't that cool? So yeah, as I said, everybody, um, stick around till the end of the interview. I've got the other clips of, uh, you know, so many seconds uh, of the new album coming out. It's Dynamite, by the way. First album since 2022, um, The Final Battle. I have a question, Michael, on these days and what we're witnessing. I don't know how political you are, but going around and looking around and in the Bible, it says things like um, the end of days will be, um, and that's the name of one of the songs, is when you're seeing famine, wars, rumors of wars. Have you, I mean, honestly, everybody says this at the time it's happening, but I don't really think it's ever been this bad for me. I'm 53 and I've never seen life so bad. Yeah, I'm 61. It, it's true. It, obviously, we've had wars throughout the ages, many wars, uh, you know, dating back thousands of years. Uh, but it does seem like the times that we live in right now, there's uh, more turmoil than ever, more confusion than ever, more separation than ever, more hatred than ever, uh, more division, you know, you name it. Uh, so many words you can find to describe what we're seeing and witnessing and experiencing right now. Uh, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, you know, we wrote a song called End of Days. And people say, yeah, nobody knows when that's coming. It's like, well, I, I think we're we're there. You know, I think we're seeing it. We're living it right now. And when will God come back? Who knows? Who knows? Nobody knows. But, I mean, I think it's right around the corner. Sooner than than later. Uh, and it's urgent right now for, it's very important for people to get your lives right. You know, get your lives right. Stop thinking about yourselves and, and start thinking about uh, eternity. Stop thinking about now, start thinking about then because it's coming. Uh, yeah, and then you, you look at the uh, politics of what's going on too, not to keep talking here, but uh, no, no, man, I like vote, for, vote for policy. Stop voting for personalities. If we voted for personalities, we wouldn't like anyone. We wouldn't vote for anyone. You know, that's... Uh, you know, I mean, the personalities of a lot of the candidates, you, you dig deep and you find out things about them. They, they all have issues, uh, you know, and, and you may not like a particular person, but it doesn't mean that they're the, the wrong person for the job. Vote, look at the policies. Look at what they stand for. Look at what they've done. Look at what they haven't done and go with that. You know, you know so, what? That, that's so insightful michael i don't mean to cut you off i know we're we don't have much time because it's presser day for you but um no that is so insightful and that is so accurate and very very well read on your part that yeah we, we it's like a book don't judge a book by its cover because the cover of that book might be somebody that's a narcissist and arrogant and all these things but maybe something inside them is uh you know accurate in their decision making they don't think about what's going to get them elected again. They don't think about what's going to get them the, the next donor dollar. They think about when they were growing up at 16 and 15 and what their mother's values taught them. So that's a very good way of looking at it. And I hope people, you know, you know, take heart of that because that was that was impressive. I'm impressed. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the presidents throughout time that, you know, weren't great people per se. They had a lot of sins. A lot of skeletons in the closets, uh, a lot of things that happened that no one would be proud of. But at the same time, they were they were good presidents. They did great things for them, and they certainly tried to. And that's my point. You know, you don't have to like 
it, when you hire, when you're looking for an attorney to win a case, you're not hiring that attorney because he's a nice guy or because, you know, he doesn't say mean things. You're hiring that attorney because he's, he's won every case and you just want the best that you want to win your case. That's what America needs right now. We need an attorney that's going to win our case. And that's what, that's who you should vote for. Yeah. <clears throat> to vote for their record of success in the realm of their human skills is what I would say. I mean, for sure, because in politics all over the world, you know, I mean, it's kind of big business and a lot of people get into politics for the right reason. But then, yeah. you know, you've got your campaign and you've got your lobbyists and all the corruption comes. Um, I yeah. wanted to ask you this question, and I know that you're going to uh, understand where I'm coming from. <clears throat> I grew up with lifting the striper soldiers under command. I got I got into the 80s rock and stuff. Now, along the way, how often have you been asked um, by journalists or people talking to you, how much of the striper Christian metal uh, genre started out, you know, at the time? And then when it took off, is did you have to kind of stay in the loop and keep it going as per a brand? I'm not sure, like I'm not questioning your faith, Michael. I'm just questioning maybe if you've been asked that and, and how accurate I would be to maybe ask that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely not. I mean, Striper's always been about just remaining true to ourselves. Okay. You know, we started start Hollywood as yeah. a, a dream band, and then we rededicated our lives, turned everything yeah. around. And, you know, having done so, we probably limited our success greatly. That's where I was going, yeah. Well, yeah, because, you know, when you stand for Christ, uh, you're a metal band in the, in the metal world, mainstream, and you're standing for Christ, you're probably not going to be as popular as bands like Metallica, you know, or in terms of sales and accomplishments and whatnot. Right. Uh, because... The world's view of Christianity just is not always, not always good. Right. Uh, so we've taken a lot of heat, but we stood our ground and we did so based on our faith and based on our passion for for Jesus and you know our belief in God and that's that's why we're here and we're willing to go through the fire for it time and time again until we're no longer here. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome answer, Michael. Um, there's a Christian band called December Radio. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. I have heard of them, yes. I'll put the link of the song up below, too, but uh, I know a person that got me into that. that Not metal, but, I mean, just a great song by uh, that band. But anyways, um, you're going to be starting a tour. Um, well, you just come off the road. Now you're going to be going on the road in September for the 40th anniversary. Plus, you're going to be... Um, 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 uh, What's that term I'm looking for? You're going to be um, not carrying this album, which you're going to be doing, not pushing the album. You know what word I'm looking for? Supporting the album for like two months. But what are you, what are you playing? Like 55 shows? It looks like September, October, November is, is packed. It's good. We're going to have a lot of shows. That's the plan and the goal. And then even probably into next year, we're going to do some, uh, you know, international touring, probably South America, hopefully Europe. Canada, Mexico, uh, we're, we're, Australia, Japan, you know, we're trying to get around to as many places as we can uh, in support of this album because we really feel it's a strong album, maybe our best album today. At least that's what the band feels. People can can laugh at that or say whatever they want, but we, we believe we're turning in our best music and our best projects today, right now, yeah. 40 years later, believe it or not. No, I believe it because, and, and and everybody just stick around after the interview and just listen. I think there's what, 12 cuts on this album. There's uh, one of my favorites is um, um, Betrayed. That's uh, grateful, but Betrayed uh, by Love. Um, Betrayed by Love. One of my favorites, um, Trinity. So they're all, all hard rock and songs. And you, you kind of think 40 years later, how do you keep that style going? But I mean, it's it's. If I just think to myself, I still love 80s metal. And I'm 53, so it doesn't go away. No. I mean, you can't, <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are, mm -hmm. but it, what matters is, is it a good song? Uh, does it move you? Uh, does it speak to you? And if it does, no matter what genre, 
uh, it's going to have an effect on you in a positive way. And that's, that's what happens to me when, you know, I don't listen to metal per se. I don't sit around and listen to metal bands. When we're sitting by the fire at night, you know, I play stuff like uh, Sade or, uh, you know, I, I will play some stuff from the 80s, of course. Uh, there's Jack no question Johnson about would go around a campfire. Jack Johnson would be going around a campfire. Absolutely. And I mean, I don't listen to metal, but my point is when I hear a really good metal song, I turn yeah. it up. If it, yeah. it, it makes me go, ooh, what's this? Draws me in. I love it. So uh, a good song is a good song, no matter what style. Yeah. And so how many cuts are on this? Just because I can't count mentally. I think there's about 12. I think it is 12 songs. I'm not 100% on that. I'd have to have the album before me, but I'm pretty sure. it. I think it's 11 cuts plus a bonus uh, alternative mix. Okay. And there's a kind of unique thing with uh, four minutes and two seconds. I, I literally think, because I got the album sent to me, by, there's like three or four songs that are exactly four minutes and two seconds. Did you know that? I'll have to look at that. That's very yeah, interesting. There's three of them. Wow, that was not planned. Well, thank God it wasn't 420. <laughs> 420, or I hope there's no meaning to 402 that I don't know about. Yeah, well, we'll find out. Uh, what would that be? April 2nd? But there's nothing else. So, January, March. Holy, my math is good, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I'll go look, look Google. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time, my friend. Um, a couple quick questions. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Unsubscribe? The opposite is subscribe, of course. Everybody do as this sweet, nice man. Michael Sweet says, of Striper, subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. And second cliche question is, favorite Canadian band, rock, musician, or personality? <clears throat> Excuse me. And it's funny. I, we were just listening to some of my favorite Canadian bands last night. Uh, I'll list more than just one. I love April Wine. I love Lover Boy. No pun intended. I love <laughs> Honey Honeymoon Sweet. I got yeah. a new now. Yeah. yeah. Dairy's, li Dairy's living so in your country. Great Canadian music. Brian Adams. Come on, you know, the list goes on and on. Yeah, and a good shout out to April Wine. Thanks, uh, Michael. Um, uh, Miles Goodwin passed away last year, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so everybody stick around to you know listen for the next uh, I don't know how many minutes I've got music in there, but I've got bootleg of uh, the new album coming out September twenty third on Frontier Records. Thanks to for uh, setting this up, and there's a link below. You can pre order it and get all the merch. All right, thanks so much, Michael. Thanks, brother. Take care, man. <laughs>